Figures Helix AI just did something no humanoid robot has managed before, and it happened in one of the most deceptively difficult domains imaginable. It wasn't in a sterile factory, a carefully set up lab, or a warehouse full of neatly organized packages. It was in an environment anyone can relate to, with an object we all own, and a task so mundane that most people don't even give it a second thought. Welcome back, guys. Alfie here with another groundbreaking update. World first. Figures Helix AI Humanoid just passed the two human test. You're watching the AI Nexus, and as always, we're here to bring you every step of the future. Let's go. Hey, figure, can you fold these towels for me? Sure thing. I'll get right on that. Helix just folded laundry, fully autonomously. No teleoperation, no behind the scenes corrections, no scripted sequence. The entire process was end to end, handled entirely by the same neural architecture that only recently impressed the robotics community with an hour long autonomous run of package reorientation in a logistics setting. On the surface, folding laundry might not sound like a big deal, but for a humanoid robot, this is a mountain climb of dexterity and adaptability. Unlike boxes or rigid tools, towels don't keep a predictable shape. They flop, bend, wrinkle, and twist in ways that can't be anticipated. Even something as simple as picking one up without snagging another can derail the whole process. For humans, it's second nature. We adjust automatically, tracing edges with our fingertips, smoothing wrinkles without thinking, and folding instinctively. For a robot, Every single one of those actions is a complex motor and perception problem. What makes this breakthrough even more remarkable is that Helix didn't use any custom software or mechanical changes for the task. The architecture, training hyperparameters, and physical platform were exactly the same as those used for its warehouse logistics run. The only difference was the dataset. That's it. The same brain that worked in a structured industrial environment was simply given data from an entirely different world and it adapted without missing a beat. This is where the significance of the achievement really starts to sink in because it means the model's capability isn't tied to a single niche. It can jump from one domain to another without engineers reinventing the wheel every time. This shift is a big deal because for decades, robots have been locked into specialization. You had warehouse robots that could move packages but were useless outside that context, factory arms that could weld but couldn't pick up a pen, and social robots that could talk but not manipulate physical objects. Helix is breaking that mold by showing that a single unified model can handle tasks as far apart as logistics and laundry without changing the fundamental system. If you think about what that implies, it's almost more important than the task itself. We're talking about a general purpose humanoid that could be trained for a massive range of real world work simply by feeding it the right data. Let's talk about what Helix actually did in this laundry demonstration. It began with a mixed pile of towels, not neatly stacked or conveniently spaced, but realistically jumbled. The robot approached the pile, identified an item to work on, and picked it up in a way that avoided tearing or dropping it. When it accidentally picked up more than one towel, it returned the extras to the pile without getting confused or derailing the process. It located edges by running its fingers along the material, pinching corners to align them, and smoothing out wrinkles before committing to the fold. Depending on how the towel was oriented, Helix adjusted its folding strategy on the fly. If the towel slipped or the fold misaligned, it didn't stop in frustration or restart from scratch. It recovered mid-action and completed the task. This wasn't just cold, mechanical movement either. While doing the work, Helix maintained eye contact with nearby people shifting its gaze naturally as conversations moved, and even using learned hand gestures to emphasize communication. None of this was pre-programmed specifically for laundry. These are emergent behaviors from its general training, blending social interaction with physical work in a way that makes the robot seem more like a human coworker than a tool. The reason folding laundry matters so much in robotics is because it's a perfect test of dexterity, perception, and adaptability. It's one of those tasks that is trivial for humans, but forces robots to bring together everything from high fidelity vision to precise finger control. It's not about the specific skill. Nobody is trying to make a laundry folding robot to replace the laundromat. It's about proving that the underlying system can handle highly deformable objects and unpredictable situations. 
If a humanoid can fold a towel, it can probably handle clothing in a retail environment, linens in a hotel, sheets in a hospital, or even flexible packaging materials in a shipping facility. The core manipulation challenges are the same. What's striking about Helix is that it doesn't use traditional object-level representations at all. There's no 3D CAD model of the towel in memory, no semantic key points telling it where the corners are. That's how most robotic systems have tried to solve manipulation, by building a detailed internal model and then planning actions based on that model. The problem is that with something as soft and shape-shifting as a towel, that internal model becomes obsolete the moment you touch it. Helix sidesteps the entire issue by working end-to-end, -end, directly mapping vision and language inputs to motor outputs in a single unified process. This is much closer to how humans work. We don't consciously build a geometric model of a towel before folding it. We see, act, and adjust in real time based on feedback. This also explains why Helix can switch domains so seamlessly. If you're not locked into a specific object model or a hard-coded task pipeline, moving from logistics to laundry is just a matter of showing the system what the new task looks like. That's why Figure could use the exact same architecture, same hyperparameters, same physical hardware, and still get a successful outcome. The only change was the data set, and that's the holy grail of scalable robotics. The psychological impact of this kind of demo shouldn't be underestimated either. When people see a robot welding, lifting boxes, or moving pallets, it's impressive but still feels like robot work. When they see a humanoid folding laundry with small, human-like adjustments, tracing edges with a thumb, aligning a fold just so, smoothing out a wrinkle, it triggers a different reaction. It feels personal. It starts to cross the boundary from machine to assistant. That's why I call it the two-human test. It's the point at which the robot's behavior stops feeling mechanical and starts feeling relatable. That's when people realize this technology could fit into their daily lives, not just industrial settings. It's also worth noting that Helix isn't performing at human speed yet, and that's fine. Speed is a problem that tends to solve itself as models get more data and more practice. The bigger milestone is that the robot can handle the complexity of the task at all, autonomously, and in a realistic environment. From here, improving speed, efficiency, and robustness is a much smaller leap than getting to this baseline of capability. The long-term vision this hints at is a humanoid workforce that can operate across multiple industries and households without needing to be redesigned or reprogrammed for each role. Imagine a Helix-powered humanoid starting the morning in a warehouse, reorienting boxes for shipment, then spending the afternoon in a hotel folding linens, and finally helping in a home setting in the evening with cooking or tidying up. Each of those environments is different, but if the underlying system can adapt with nothing more than new data, then the scaling potential is enormous. Right now, this is still an early proof of concept. Helix is not being sold as a laundry folding machine, nor is it replacing trained staff in logistics just yet. But these kinds of demonstrations are the stepping stones to that reality. Every new domain it masters expands its generalization ability and strengthens its capacity to learn entirely new skills without code changes. When you step back and look at the bigger picture, this is less about towels and more about the philosophy of robotics. For decades, we've been building robots to solve very narrow problems with very rigid solutions. Helix represents a shift toward building one system that can tackle a huge variety of problems with a single, adaptable brain. And that's the difference between a machine that's stuck in one job and a true general-purpose humanoid. The day may come when folding laundry is just one of a thousand things these robots can do without anyone thinking twice. But for now, it's a milestone. One that shows how far embodied AI has come and how close we are to having robots that can learn and work the way we do. This two-human test isn't just a novelty. It's a signpost pointing straight toward a future where the line between human and machine capability is getting harder and harder to see. And while Helix's laundry folding milestone shows how far embodied AI can go in adapting across domains, China's biggest robotics event of the year was busy proving that the rest of the industry isn't standing still either. Just a few days later, the World Robot Conference 2025 opened its doors in Beijing flooding the floor with breakthroughs that spanned every corner of robotics, from lifelike biomimicry to industrial powerhouses ready for deployment. This is not just another tech expo, 
It's a glimpse at the very near future of how robots will work, play, and live alongside us. From industrial powerhouses to tiny, adorable humanoids, from lifelike biomimicry to fully robotic entertainment, every corner of this event is packed with something that makes you stop and stare. One of the first things to grab attention this year is Festo's Bionic Bee. This is no clunky drone. It's a feather-light, eerily realistic flying machine with wings that beat and flex almost exactly like a real insect's. The design is so intricate you can see each tiny segment of the wing structure shimmering under the expo lights. It hovers, banks, and corrects its flight mid-air, reacting to environmental cues in a way that feels alive. Festo has been experimenting with biomimicry for years, but seeing this level of precision in such a small package makes you think about possibilities beyond science demonstrations. Environmental monitoring, agricultural pollination, even search and rescue in tight spaces could be on the table. A short walk away, Spirit AI has brought something completely different. Their humanoid robot, Maz-1. This machine doesn't just walk. It moves with a flow that almost tricks your brain into thinking you're watching a person. The head tilts when it listens, the eyes track with uncanny focus, and when it speaks, the tone is warm and modulated. During one demonstration, Maz-1 was given a logistics problem and, without skipping a beat, calculated a 12.7 efficiency improvement, complete with a nod that almost felt like it was proud of itself. It's the combination of advanced conversational AI with expressive body language that really makes Maz-1 stand out. It's the kind of robot that could guide visitors in a museum, coordinate a warehouse floor, or even host part of a conference like this one. Then there's Siasun, and they're not here to play around. The company officially launched its new series of embodied intelligent humanoid robots, and the focus is crystal clear. Real-world industrial application. These robots are built to work in scenarios that demand both dexterity and adaptability. Think assembly lines, logistics hubs, and other environments where humans and machines have to operate side by side. At their booth, one robot scanned barcodes, picked up fragile packages, and placed them onto a moving conveyor with the precision of a veteran worker. Another navigated a simulated warehouse floor, avoiding obstacles and adjusting its path in real time. This is industrial robotics moving past the lab and into the spaces where efficiency and safety actually make or break the bottom line. On the complete opposite end of the scale, Lumos Robotics has Nix, a mini humanoid robot that's basically irresistible. It stands there looking cute, and then suddenly it's dancing, waving, even pulling off little gymnastic poses. It's not about heavy duty work, it's about personality and interaction. In a sea of big, imposing robots, Nix is the one you'd want on your desk, greeting you in the morning or keeping kids entertained while subtly teaching them coding and robotics concepts. It's proof that not all breakthroughs have to be about brute force or industrial capacity. Sometimes winning hearts is just as important as winning contracts. Fourier Robotics has made its mark, too. Known for their modular systems, they're showing setups that can adapt to everything from medical assistance to high-precision manufacturing. The flexibility here is what draws the crowds. Being able to reconfigure the same robotic platform for completely different use cases means businesses get more value out of their investments. The idea is that you could buy a Fourier system today for factory work and later adapt it for research or even hospitality without needing an entirely new machine. And of course, UB Tech is here. They've built a reputation for robots that bridge education, service, and entertainment, and they're leaning hard into that at WRC 2025. Their booth is packed, with demos of robots teaching basic programming to kids others acting as tour guides, and still others showing off dance routines that sync perfectly to music. UB Tech knows how to make robots approachable, and that's on full display here. Then you turn a corner, and you're met with something you didn't expect. The engine AI robot performing the traditional hatchet dance. It's a surreal blend of cultural heritage and cutting-edge engineering. The motions are sharp and deliberate, the timing perfect, and the entire performance somehow manages to feel both mechanical and soulful. It's the kind of thing that makes you realize robotics doesn't have to replace culture. It can celebrate and preserve it in ways that connect with modern audiences. Meanwhile, 
Lim X is deep in rehearsal mode for a big show later in the event. They're working with a lineup of robotic musicians, each tuned and calibrated to hit their notes flawlessly. Watching the engineers fine-tune every movement, every pluck of a robotic guitar string, you start to realize this is about more than just novelty. It's about precision performance art, the kind that's almost impossible for humans to maintain perfectly over hours of play. Day two of WRC 2025 brought a highlight that's got everyone talking. The world's first robot-run restaurant, complete with a fully robotic band. Walk in and you're greeted by mechanical servers that glide between tables, bringing steaming plates of food without a single wobble or spill. In the kitchen, robotic arms flip noodles, slice vegetables, and plate dishes with perfect presentation every time. And just when you think that's impressive enough, the lights dim and the band starts playing. Every musician on stage is a robot. Keyboards, guitars, bass, drums, each one perfectly in sync with the others. The sound is rich, the timing flawless, and the spectacle unforgettable. Somehow, the food even tastes better when delivered to the beat of a robotic drumline. It's moments like these that make WRC 2025 feel so electric. You're not just seeing tech demos, you're seeing real, tangible examples of how robotics is slipping seamlessly into our daily lives, at work, at play, and even at the dinner table. The sheer range of applications on display here is staggering. On one end, you have industrial giants pushing the limits of automation for productivity and safety. On the other, you have small, personable robots designed purely to connect with people. And in between, there's an entire spectrum of possibilities being explored. What's also striking is how many of these robots are not just conceptual. They're ready, or nearly ready, for deployment. That's a huge shift from a few years ago, when conferences like this were dominated by prototypes that looked amazing but were still years from practical use. Now, companies are bringing systems that can roll out tomorrow if the demand is there. It's an unmistakable sign that the pace of progress in robotics isn't just fast, it's accelerating. You can feel the competition here too. Every booth is a statement. We're ready for the future, and we're going to be the ones building it. Companies are clearly watching each other, pushing to match or beat whatever the next booth is showing. And that kind of pressure is exactly what drives innovation. Festo's Bionic Bee might inspire new micro-drone designs. Maz One's human-like presence might push other humanoid makers to focus more on emotional intelligence. Sia Soon's industrial robots might force competitors to up their game in scenario-specific adaptability. Even Nix, with all its charm, might push the market for smaller, affordable humanoids into new territory. By the time you've walked the entire floor, you've seen a living snapshot of robotics in 2025. You've watched machines that could replace dangerous or repetitive human jobs. You've interacted with robots that could teach, entertain, and keep people company. You've tasted food cooked and served entirely by non-human hands. And you've heard music performed by instruments without a single human player, yet still capable of stirring the crowd. WRC 2025 isn't just about the shock factor. It's about proving that robotics has matured into something far more integrated into society than most people realize. It's a wake-up call that the future isn't coming. It's here, and it's rolling, flying, and dancing right in front of us.